everyone. Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. I'm here in my new studio and I'm going to be doing a gouache painting today and there's a reason for that. I'm going to use this G's Finest Gouache again and I was given five sets of gouache by this company. They gave me five full sets just like this one to share with all of you. So what I'm going to be doing is a giveaway. So I'd like you all to send me a message if you're interested in the giveaway and you like to paint with gouache or want to learn to paint with gouache or whatever. Um, go ahead and drop me a line and let me know. Um, I'm going to have to, because this, this uh, is going to cost me quite a bit shipping five people their things. I'd like to keep this in the U.S. Um, so if you live in the U.S., just apply. I apologize for that. It's just that right now I don't, I just don't have the money for, for, um, doing international shipping, especially if it ends up three or four of you are, are from another country. That's going to cost me over a hundred dollars in shipping costs. So, um, just go ahead and drop me a line. Let me know where you're where you're living. Um, just your state. I don't need to know uh, anything else. You know, you don't need to put information down there that might put you in jeopardy. But if you're interested in this gouache, then um, let me know. And I'm going to go ahead and do a painting today in gouache. I'm using a photo from Paint My Photo, which I will link below. They're not going to allow me to... Uh, show you the photo. That's their rule, but you can go to PMP, paint my photo, pmp-art.com, and I will link that as well, and set up your own, um, your, just register as a member. It doesn't cost you anything, and then you can access these photos. These photos are meant to be painted. If you use their website, <clears throat> You cannot post any of your paintings unless they were as a result of a photo from that website. So I'm going to be using an old piece of paper here that I found as I was unpacking. I'm just about done now uh, with the unpacking and I'm going to be uh, um, painting on this dirty piece of paper that I found. And you know, it's in gouache, so it's going to be covering this fairly well and um it, this is a river scene in a forest. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and if you want to see a quick glimpse of how I'm doing on my studio, let me show you that real quick. I will just give you a zoomed out look. Here's my table. My cute little trash can I got. I love this trash can because I can just do this. And it's slow closing and everything. Um... I got some of my plants out here now, which I'm happy about. I got to put a plant up there. I forgot about that. Um, and there's this area. I still got a little bit to do over here. That's my coat sitting there. Pat's going to be putting up coat hooks over there by my thermostat and my switches. I'm going to have to put a bookshelf over there where my coat is. And I've got some things still sitting out there. I'm getting there, though. And that's this side. Now, when you get over here, that's where the mess begins. I've got a bunch of books that need to go on bookshelves. I'm thinking I might just use one of these carts for that, but I'm not sure. I may just put them up in my loft because they're all like knitting books and stuff like that. Got a couple things I need to hang. A bunch of old paintings that I need to get rid of. I mean, these are things when I first learned how to paint. <laughs> Pretty funny. Um, I mean, there's some some really kind of ugly paintings in here. So, I'm going to have to get rid of a lot of those. There's some more over here, too. But anyway, um, they were all in acrylic and stuff. So, a lot of this has to get put away. has to go up in the loft still. And this loft is filled already with my jewelry supplies, as you can see. Um, they're all up there. And then over here on this side is where I have all of my knitting supplies. Um, and you can't see those. They're pushed back pretty far. There's some that are coming up the sides. And then there's a few things I threw up there <laughs> real fast because I needed to get rid of them. Um, 
So that's it. That's where I'm at so far. It is getting cleaner. It's getting there. I got a couple spills on the floor I need to clean up, but I can actually see my rugs again, which is really nice. And then my sweater. Um, once I get coat hooks, I'll hang my sweater up there. This is the sweater that keeps me warm on the bitter cold days when my heater is struggling to keep up. But it's in the 30s out now, so it's doing fine. Here's a ton of my boxes. Check this out. So I've been working hard. <laughs> So anyway, let's get to the painting. Oh, and then this is a mess too. I've got to go through a bunch of this stuff. But let's get to the painting now. And uh, again, if you want to be included in the Gs um, paint, uh, Gs paints, then let me know. They're gouache. I'm going to start here with the pencil. If I can find one here. Let me grab one. Oh. And I'm just going to quickly draw in some of the things that are going on. Looks like a third of the way up here. It's where the river comes in. And then the bank comes down like this. And then there's rocks. I gotta enlarge this photo so I can see it better. There we go. There's a huge rock right here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit and narrate and um, let you know what I'm doing as I go. There was lemon, yellow, burnt umber, black, white, cerulean blue, sap green, viridian, rose, and yellow ochre. Now, not all of those colors are necessary. I could have cut back and mixed some of them myself, but I just wanted to use those colors, and um, they all blend very well, as you'll see throughout the painting. So I'm going ahead in right now with some cerulean blue, and I'm adding white to it and mixing it together wet on the page. And I'm doing a light wash of this cerulean blue. Normally when I start out, now many of you have heard this before, um, but for those of you who may be watching for the first time, um, I'm sorry, that was a brush that I was using, which is the number 14 original gold King Art uh, it's a golden Taclon brush. Anyway, back to what I was going to say. Normally when I start out with gouache, I start out with light washes and then I gradually, meaning that I have more water mixed into the paint. Um, I'm not doing wet into wet washes or anything like that because they don't spread very well. I may, I may have done that a little bit with the sky, but it doesn't spread very well. Not like uh, watercolor does. But I start out my first layers with a lot of water mixed into the paint. And then as I go over those layers each time, as you see this black and green that are going on, uh, you can see right through it to the paper, which is fine because it's an underpainting. Um, that's right, I did add one more color. It is deep green, I think. What's it called? Yeah, deep green. Um, but anyway, I do that first, and then after the first layer dries, then I start to go in with secondary layers, then third layers, etc., etc. I'm saving the water, though, for later in the painting, so I'm not doing the entire page with its wash initially, if that makes sense. Now here I'm going in with a Rosemary and Company brush. It's number seven. That's all that I can read on this, but I believe it is from the Eclipse series, which is like a fake badger hair. It's a very stiff brush, great for gouache, acrylic, oil painting, etc. I don't use it much for watercolor because it's too stiff and they don't hold enough fluid for my liking. Now the style of this painting is that I'm kind of dabbing colors in here and there 
You'll see sky holes in the distant trees and I'm gradually blending these colors together. That's going to give it its look at the end. This brush that I'm using now is just a cheap brush from the store. All the writing has worn off. I've had it forever. Just a flat brush, which is about, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch. These darker colors here, I'm just mixing the deep green with a little bit of black. And now I'm going in with black mixed with a little bit of burnt umber to give my soil a real deep, dark color. Now it's nice to stay within the lines and everything, and with watercolor you really have to be careful about your edges, but with gouache, because it is opaque and you can go over it and over it and over it as much as you want, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake or um, whether you're gonna be covering that dirt up a little bit. Sure, you can go around it. It saves um, time when you're painting, but it's really not necessary. Now here I'm going in with a silver black velvet, three quarter inch flat. I start out with black here, but the light will be coming from the left-hand side onto this tree, so I've added rose and some white over it. Now I'm just getting a little more black so that I can blend them together because I don't want that much of the tree to be a bright rose color. It'll blend eventually.
Okay, it is day two here and I'm still working on this painting. I worked for a couple hours on it yesterday and now I'm coming back. So I just wanted you to be aware that I'm not finishing these paintings in a half hour or anything like that, especially one of this size, which isn't big, but it's bigger than a sketchbook, which I work frequently in because they're smaller. Um, but um, I just wanted you to be aware that I'm not, not doing all of this in one day. I probably could have, but I just didn't have it in me to do that. So today I'm finishing it and I'm going to tell you the story of what happened with Pat's surgery. So I will uh, go ahead and tell you that while I'm painting. I will hyperlapse this again. I just wanted you to see me working in real time so that you can see how fast I'm working. I have it set up to be four times faster in my hyperlapse, which is about the slowest I can go in hyperlapse. So uh, working with a flat brush on these trees helps to keep the trunks in the right um, form without getting too wild and big and small and whatever, you know. That made no sense. Anyway, I'm shaking. I had a situation happen to me at Walmart where some vendor I thought was going to attack me. <laughs> he blocked me in on my parking. I wasn't parking. I was standing in a no parking zone. And I guess he thought he owned that property. He did it to my friend last week, and he did it to me today. And uh, so I reported it to Walmart, and they figured out who he is. He was a vendor for the pharmacy department. Does not work for Walmart. So they're calling his company to take care of it. But I'm still shaking. You can see when I hold my brush how much I'm shaking. I can't, I can't stop it. That's crazy. Look at that. Uh, Everything was okay. He did not hit me, but I thought he was going to for a minute there. He got a little too close for comfort. So I'm just finishing up these trees, darkening them again, adding another layer. Um, I'm going to add a little white to this too. I just... Um, when it dried, I didn't know how purple this would dry, so I'm going to go over this a little bit with a coat of black, but I'm blending it together. I'm making my brush a little bit wetter, and when you make your brush wetter and your paint thin, when you're doing over layers, you start to blend those colors together on the paper. That's what that does. With every successive layer of gouache, you need to get slightly thicker in your paint. A little less water unless you want to do what I'm doing right now where you mix these colors together on the page now I'm not done with the water or anything like that I just got my first layers down most of this was first layers yesterday and now I'm gonna be doing all of my my upper layers my finishing layers I should say yeah that's starting to look a little better there's not that much sun coming through, I don't think. I can make it whatever I want, which I am kind of doing anyway, but. Okay. There, I like that look a little bit better. Now my greens here on the edges, and maybe I'm being just too perfectionistic here. I get that way sometimes. And I start needling around, but this area, there's too much white. I don't want that much white showing through, so just painting in that area. There's another one down here that's like that. Okay, and over here I want to make the ground a little browner. 
and a little less black so that these rocks show up a little bit better. Because right now you can't see some of them. And I'm going around them and you probably can't even see them. But it feels good to be painting again. I feel guilty. Isn't that weird? Because I haven't painted in so long. I feel like I need to be doing something else. And I really do need to be doing something else. But, you know, I told you about that enthesitis I get in my hips. Now I've got post-tibial tendonitis in my lower inner ankle which supports the arch of your foot. And I've already lost one arch. I'm losing the other arch of my foot. And uh, I'm waiting on a brace to arrive today so that I can try to get it under control. I've been doing exercises, but walking is so difficult for me right now. And I shouldn't be barefoot at all. Right now I'm in my stocking feet. And I shouldn't be because I need the arch support, so. Just one more problem. And I'll, there are some of you who've just started watching my channel, and I'm gonna tell you right now, my channel started because I lost my career as a registered nurse due to disability. Um, they wouldn't allow me to work anymore. And so my doctors wouldn't, not the hospital, the hospital would have let me work but um, my doctors wouldn't let me work. So I've been on disability with something called ankylosing spondylitis or axial. They've changed the name to axial spondyloarthritis. And that's what I have. And it affects the spine, but it can also affect peripheral joints, especially the hips and the feet. I also have a heart defect that um, is related to the disease as well. Then recently I was diagnosed with something called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which is why I get so short of breath all the time when I'm talking and I cough a lot. Um, it can cause emphysema and COPD. So far I'm doing pretty good. I do have asthma though, um, but it, uh, makes me very winded all the time. It's a genetic disorder on the 14th chromosome. I'm just a freaking mess. I must have been in the short end of the gene pool when they called my name and I got the leftovers because the rest of my family is fine. But what I was trying to get to was that <clears throat> when I talk about my health, I'm talking about it because my channel originally was founded, I guess you could call it, um, uh, because of my disability. And when I learned how to paint, <clears throat> I swore that I was going to come to YouTube and pay it forward because there weren't enough free lessons here on YouTube at the time when I was learning. Now they're just about everywhere, but um, they weren't. So when I talk about my health, it is not because I am whining. Somebody said to me recently that I was whining and I'm not whining. I do have these health issues and many of the subscribers on this channel also have similar health issues and they voice them to me on a regular basis. So when I'm talking about them, I got to roll my sleeve up so I don't ruin my shirt. When I'm talking about them, um, it gives them reassurance that they, they can do these things too. And there's days I can't. Um, because painting is too hard when I'm in too much pain. But I started this as a mindfulness, kind of an art therapy thing, and it kind of grew from there. So when I talk about my health on this channel, it's because that's how the channel started. It's not to be whining about my health, just so you new people are aware. Sometimes I talk about my faith, too, so if that offends you, you may not want to be here. But, anyhow. Now this one I want to leave a little more purple on. These I wanted to leave a little less on, but I am going to mix. I don't know if you can see my, 
my palette or not. I am going to mix a little of this pink from yesterday and some white because I want to um, get a little reflection here and there on some of these trees. And I'm dabbing a lot of the paint off, but I want to catch it right about here. Catch it up here. Catch it over here. This one a little more so. These are a little too thin. If you were looking close, you would see that the black is a little too thin. I need to go over it again and add more layering to it. My hand is shaking so bad. These are gonna be crooked trees, but that's okay. I don't like them to be perfectly straight because I think it looks too fake. That was one thing when I took um, pastel lessons from Sharon Welsh, who is an award-winning artist. Um, she does oil painting primarily and pastel. And she was going to teach me both, but then it ended up I had to stop my, my um, private lessons with her because, oh, here comes the UPS truck for me. Yay, yay. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, she had to... Uh, I had to stop my lessons because at the time, Diesel, my dog, ended up having surgery. He had a herniated disc in the neck, and the surgery was outrageously expensive. So I had to stop my, my lessons with her, which I really regretted. But now, a lot of the stuff that I had difficulty understanding back then is now sticking. So Sharon, if you're watching, it is sticking, and a lot of it has come back. And one of the things was, was she hated that my trees were always so straight and they'd be, you know, all looking the same. It bothered her. So I've learned to make them crooked, falling over, whatever. The rocks are the next thing I'm gonna work on. And I wanna add a little more shadowing to those grabbing a little bit of my black and mixing some grays on the palette. Or I could just wet it and use more of the white, but I want this not to be dry brushed on at this point. I want it to, just to show the lighter color. My son and his girlfriend are coming up and I had to get her a gift for her birthday. Her birthday is the 7th or is it the 6th? I forget. But anyway, Diesel's birthday is also on the um, 7th. So I got to fix that. That looks like it's falling into the water. That didn't come out right, but it's easy to fix. Um, so we're going to celebrate their birthdays. <laughs> the dog and Monica. Poor Monica. Sharing her birthday with the dog. But he's the best dog, so couldn't be better. Yeah, she wouldn't agree with that because their dog is the best dog to them. So I get that. Cerberus is a really good dog. Yes, he's named after the dog, the three-headed dog that guards the gates of hell. <laughs> I guess my son wanted a tough name. I was like, okay. He's definitely anything but that. He's just a softy. Okay, now I gotta fix the bottoms a little more. It's a little more black. I'm gonna darken this up. Maybe add a little brown into some of them. look the same.
So many of you had not heard what happened with Pat following his surgery, and you've been asking me about it. So I'll tell you the story real quick. My husband had to have ear surgery for a tumor inside of his ear. He has hearing loss in both ears. Um, these tumors are benign tumors, and they usually grow in people who swim in cold water, very cold water lakes, which the Great Lakes are. They're colder water. So um, it's pretty much a given. If you live in Michigan, you're more prone to those tumors because we swim in the Great Lakes a lot. But anyway, um, they form from childhood apparently. So this ear that he had surgery on was his better ear for hearing, um, but both ears were destroyed and he had the most damage in his good ear. And the bones were pretty much destroyed and the anatomy of the ear, those little bones have to vibrate off of each other in order to make sound so that you can hear. Well, his had deteriorated and they were no longer vibrating off of each other, but his eardrum had also collapsed and the eardrum was acting like the bone and was allowing the bones to vibrate off the eardrum, which gave him better hearing in that ear. So they wanted to hold off on surgery as long as possible, which they did uh, for a couple of years, and then it was too long, and they had to go in and remove this tumor, which he did, and he said that he thought that he did a really good job on the surgery, that he had to avoid touching those bones because he was afraid they'd crumble, and also he had to put a tube in his ear but I asked him, well, did you leave the eardrum collapsed? And he said, yes, he did. He left the eardrum collapsed. So he's hopeful that his hearing will resolve and everything will be okay in that ear. And so we were, he came to in recovery and I was told I could go back to visit him. And I said something to the nurse. I had noticed that there was some frank red bleeding on his dressing and that I, I thought that... Um, it was bleeding. It was more than just oozing. It was a bleeding a little bit too quickly. But she said, no, no, that's normal. That's normal. And I said, well, do I need to go out and buy bandages? And she said, well, here, I'll give you, we'll, we'll, re I said, can you at least reinforce it? And she said, yeah, we'll reinforce it. So she took some four by fours, folded them over, slapped them on his ear and sent us on our way, which I was not pleased about. So we're driving across I-696 in Michigan. Um, and it, is a very, very busy eight lane expressway. And it's usually bumper to bumper stopped during rush hour. We were heading eastbound, which is the faster lane at the end of the day. And westbound gets bumper to bumper and is like stopped. Well, we had to get off at this exit to go to my sister's house um, to pick up the dog and Pat wanted to go home, but I was gonna try talking him into staying overnight at my sister's in case we had any complications. And we're driving down this, the expressway, and then all of a sudden I hear Pat say, Sharon. And I looked over at him, and he showed me his hand was full of blood. And I thought, I just said, son of a bitch. And I was like trying to make my way across four lanes of traffic to get off on the exit and to get over to my sister's house. And he's like, well, why don't we just turn around and go back? I said, Pat, I can't take you back to that hospital. It stopped traffic. There's no way I could get through. I said, you need an ambulance. And he's like, oh, I don't need an ambulance. I said, Pat, Pat you're, you're doing more than just oozing a little bit of blood here. Just trust me. So we got to my sister's house. I walked him inside, and I wrapped a towel around his head, and I told him to hold pressure. I told him to hold pressure in the, in the car, but he kept falling asleep because of the anesthesia. So I was struggling to try to take care of him and drive at the same time. So I got to my sister's, got him in the house. I sat him up in a chair. I said, don't lay down, because if you lay down, you increase the pressure in your head. And he would just bleed faster. Plus, he has high blood pressure anyway. And he was getting himself anxious. And I was trying to keep him calm and everything. And I called 911, and I told them, you know, I needed EMS, that he had just had surgery, and he was hemorrhaging. And so they came to take him to the hospital. And when I got to the hospital, they had him in the trauma room. He had already soaked through a bath towel at my sister's house and had they had reinforced his dressing and put these heavy ace wrap bandages around his head to try to put pressure on it. 
and then he filled four hospital blankets, just saturated them with blood. And I sat him up to try to clean him up and noticed the blood had gone all the way down his back on his sheet too. He was just laying in pools of blood, you know, it was horrible. But anyway, after about six hours, they finally got the bleeding stopped and um, they were gonna let him go home. And I said, uh, no, he's gonna stay overnight for observation in case this happens again. I can't stay awake all night and we have to drive up north tomorrow. So no, he's staying in the hospital for observation. And this was the second hospital. They didn't take him back to the same hospital because it was too far away. So he took him to the hospital that I used to work at. And so we were there and they stopped it and he did fine overnight and we got home the next day and he had to sleep sitting up for several days so that he didn't bleed and things got under control and he's doing much better now. He had a follow up with his doctor and they took some of his packing out and he goes back in a few weeks to have the remainder taken out. Still on a lifting restriction. But thank you all for asking uh, about him and for your prayers for him. We really do appreciate it. Pat appreciates it so much. And, you know, he's concerned he won't get his hearing back. But I feel like his hearing has already improved a little bit with this packing being removed. I noticed he heard me last night so um, without his other hearing aid in, which normally he can't do. I mean, I was right up by his ear, but it was great. So anyway, that's how he's doing. Okay, well, I'm about done with this. It's going to take me a while to get back in the swing of things. And this tape st is very sticky, so I'm going to use my heat gun to loosen the stick while I'm pulling the tape off. If you're ever worried about pulling off your tape and ripping your paper, do this. It helps tremendously. It really does. going to take me a while to get back in the swing. It's weird. It's not really like riding a bike, is it? When you stop painting, you've got to keep doing it and keep doing it and not doing it consistently for a year when I used to paint daily is, is a real challenge, was a challenge and I really got out of practice. There we go. So anyway, here's the finished piece and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do want to be included in the G-Squash get uh, giveaway, I was going to say getaway. I wish there was a getaway, but well, not right now. I don't want to travel. But uh, anyway, this gouache paint by G's Finest, I have five to give away. If you are not in the U.S. and you want to participate, I can do that, but you would have to send me uh, the postage because it would be too expensive and it may even be cheaper for you to buy the paint than for me to mail it to you. Some countries will cost like $25 and I think this gouache is only $24. So um, otherwise, if you're in the U.S., then put your name down below that you want to be entered into the giveaway and I will enter you. And then we will draw names very soon. Everybody remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. No internet hate. No hate on the roads. Just be kind to people. Have a great day.